A new study shows that Canada's wildfires released over 3 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere in 2023. In one year, that's almost four times the emissions produced by all the airplanes on Earth. The data was analyzed by the World Resources Institute and the University of Maryland. For a closer look at this, we're joined this morning by Annabella Bonata. She's the Managing Director of Climate Science at the Intact Center on Climate Adaptation at the University of Waterloo. We've reached her in Guelph. Annabella Bonata, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Why did Canada have so many wildfires last year? So there were a few factors that really helped that wildfire season be so extreme. And one of them was just uh, Canada was drier than normal for a very long time. Uh, So starting in 2021 and through 2022, there were drought conditions in most of Canada, but especially out in BC and in Alberta. And the time that 2023 hit, um, we had a drier than normal winter. There wasn't that nice, big, thick snowpack that we like ahead of the spring season and we had um, a hotter winter and a hotter start to the spring especially out in Alberta um, where the wildfires really started very early in in May and spread very quickly Um, so all that dryness that those hot days that just means more fuel on the ground so when a wildfire does ignite it spreads very quickly through all that dry debris like leaves branches trees dry soil um, and that just really impacted our, our 2023 wildfire season. There's sort of a debate in BC as to what was the kind of the cause of these wildfires and and whether it was forest management or climate change or some mix of both. How do you kind of parse that out? It is, it's a mix of, of both. Unfortunately, it's so difficult to just blame it on one thing or say that the cause was one thing. Um, so it's a mix of, you know, we've been suppressing fire in Canada for over a hundred years Um, And fire needs to be managed a little bit differently. We need to let the small ones burn. Um, But as humans, we we have a hard time letting that happen. We're, you know, we're terrified that a wildfire will come come close to our community. So we tend to just put them out. Um, But we have excellent fire managers uh, across Canada that understand when a wildfire can be left to burn, which is what naturally needs to happen, and when it should absolutely be suppressed. So when it's getting super close to our communities, um, where when our infrastructure is at risk, when our lives are at risk, those fires can be put out. Um, so going forward, you know, that management just needs to, to occur on both sides. But climate will have an impact just from, again, just drying more uh, more trees than, than we usually would have had and having more hot and windy days to, to spread that fire. You heard me say in the introduction that the, the emissions from this, these fires were four times all of the airplanes on Earth for one year. And I wonder about comparing things to other things. Like, can you compare fires to airplanes or should you compare fires to fires from other years? Or what's a, val- what's a useful metric to describe the, the impact of this? You know, that, that's a really great point because comparing it to aviation makes sense because so many of us understand, uh, you know, airplanes have a, a very large emission um, when it comes to, to CO2 emissions. Um, so it's a good comparison. However, we do need to remember this is one year for wildfire, record year. Uh, the emissions were enormous. They surpassed aviation. They surpassed industry emissions for that year. Uh, But that's not going to occur every year, whereas with industry emissions, with agriculture emissions, with aviation emissions, they're not only the same every year, but but slowly increasing year after year. Right. Whereas our yeah, our wildfire emissions won't be that large and the trees that grow back can actually, you know, uh, sequester or take away some of that CO2 from the atmosphere. What do we know now about the air quality in Canada last year? You know, we had here in Kelowna, we went through the whole summer without a whiff of smoke at all. And then, boy, did we ever get a a lungful at the end. But in general, you know, there was smoke in, in Toronto. There was smoke in Ottawa, Montreal and Vancouver. How did that affect major cities? So that's the important part is that you might not be experiencing it now or throughout the summer, but you could just get one day of intense uh, low air quality. And it's because wildfire smoke really just depends on which way the winds are blowing. So even if wildfire is not occurring close to your area, you can still be very much impacted by wildfire smoke. Um, And so what that means is like these really, really small particles that can get into your lungs, into your bloodstream even, um, and can make you feel ill. So at the very low level, maybe 
give you a headache, um, you're, you're not breathing well, but if you already have illnesses, it can be quite dangerous. Um, or the, for the elderly children, it's especially dangerous um, to be breathing in that bad air quality. So people should really start thinking about preparing their homes. So for example, just you know, properly sealing windows and doors to make sure that smoke doesn't get in um, and replacing or cleaning out air filters in the ventilation system just to clean out um, that air and just be, be watchful. So maybe install the WeatherCan app, which will give you a warning um, if there is bad air quality in your area. You know, I'm always interested when I talk to wildfire people uh, and climate mm-hmm. scientists about what they wish got more attention or what they think is some some ignored aspect of the the thing they study. What's that answer for you? I think for me, it's that there's so much that we can do, but it needs to be done now. So let's not leave it to the future or think that it's not going to affect you. So we, we kind of go on in our days thinking we're not going to be affected by something. Um, But last summer was a great example of almost all of Canada was affected by wildfire smoke. So think about what you can do today. So we have great programs in Canada, like Fire Smart Canada and Fire Smart in each province um, that provides so much guidance on what people can do to protect their homes and their communities from wildfire. Um, So just quickly, some things are, you know, just clearing out debris from, from your roof, your gutters. Um, and keep away vegetation from your home for 1.5 meters, definitely, and then up to 10 meters, you know, any combustible material, remove as much of it as you can. Um, and there are lots of these measures. So I encourage people to check out Fire Smart Canada um, to learn about all this guidance. Annabella, always good to talk to you. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Annabella Bonata is the Managing Director of Climate Science at the Intact Center on Climate Adaptation at the University of Waterloo, we reached her this morning in Guelph, Ontario.